Do you struggle with being an angry mom? I did. I'm Jennifer Lovemore and on this channel I talk about all things momming and how to grow you as a person. In this video we're going to discuss practical ways to stop being so angry so that you can get off the cycle, out of the cycle of angry outbursts and the guilt that goes with them. And I, and I know that guilt because I've experienced it myself. Being an angry mom was something I really struggled with when my kids were young and once I started to do the work on myself I was able to start getting a handle on my anger. So if you feel like you need help with managing your anger feel free to set up a call with me. The link is in the chat below and let's see how we can help you do that. If you haven't watched my first video on this part one of how to stop being an angry mom go back and do that now and then come back here and continue. How to stop being an angry mom. Number one, identify your triggers. What makes you most likely to yell and get angry? Make a mental note of those things. Why do they make you angry? Is it when you're tired? Is it when you're stressed and there's a lot going on? Is it when your kids yell in the house? Is it when you're multitasking and whatever it is? Write it down, get a handle on this. So, and then make a plan for how to handle your triggers. What will you do instead of yelling? Take yourself to one side and go and just deep breathe for a, for a minute. Uh, are you going to sing yourself a happy song? Are you going to think of something positive? Are you going to pray? What are you going to do to help yourself stop being angry in that moment and stop feeling triggered in that moment? Therapy might help you to work through old anger because old anger is very often the source of current anger and, and magnifies our current anger into something that's way out of proportion for the circumstances that we're in right now. So cons consider doing that as well. All right, number two is know your history. Understand when you are projecting old anger onto current situations and process any trauma that you have been through. Learn to recognize when you are responding in unreasonable ways to current situations that are based on your history. All right, and it may be that when your kids don't listen to you that you get really, really super angry because that is something that you experienced at school or with um, in your family of origin or whatever. And I'm just randomly picking thoughts here, but our triggers come from all sorts of places. So know your history. Number three, you need to plan ahead and plan your life. Now, this was something that I didn't like to do because planning was too hard. <laughs> Felt like it took too much mental energy to actually plan my life. But when I began to do it, oh, it, re it resolved so much of my stress and anxiety because I knew what was coming. I knew I had a plan for my, for my day, for my week. And I knew that I didn't have to be stressed over everything that was on my to-do list because I had allocated it in my planner and really brought my stress levels way, way, way down. And I just want to throw this in here, planning your meals makes a massive, massive difference. I don't know how many times I stood in front of my grocery cupboard trying to decide what to make for lunch, not able to decide and getting more and more frustrated because I couldn't decide and then I'm irritated and then one of the kids would come to me and ask something and I would snap at them and I would be irritated with them and then I'm like, why did I do that? I'm such a bad mom and I feel so guilty and so bad and all because I didn't know what I was gonna cook for, for the next meal. Start planning your meals. Really, it makes a massive, massive difference. Okay, number four, and how to stop being an angry mom. Discipline better. Hmm, now this is a challenging one. This is like a topic that is so huge, we can't cover even a fraction of it today, but we will be, be unpacking this a bit more in, in future videos. But you want to create clear expectations for your kids, and then you want to follow through on them, bottom line. So I want you to come right now and do your chores. If they don't, what are you going to do? You need to have a plan for that and, and apply consequences to, to them. Cause and effect, like in the book Boundaries with Kids, this is the old version. This, the chapter on cause and effect in this book is just worth its weight in gold. You must always have a plan and follow through on that plan if your children are not going to obey you. And obedience is the foundation of your char of character growth in your children. You can't have creative consequences with them if they won't obey you. So the, your foundation of discipline is obedience. And that's something that you need, need to be worked on. Like I said, it's a big topic. We'll discuss it in future. But you want to also 
train your kids to help you with chores and to lighten your load. So teach them how to do dishes. I know it may, they make a mess in the beginning, but you'll, the, the day will come when you'll be able to say, that's your job, you're doing it from now on, and you won't have to do it anymore. They will set the table, they will make the meal, they will clear the table, they will do the dishes, they will sweep the floor, they will clean the house, they will clean your bathrooms. They can help you lighten the load, seriously. And this is not child labor, this is a team, we work together as a team, and the family works together to run this household. And you're teaching your children life skills that will serve them well for the rest of their lives. Number five, simplify your life. Maybe you're doing too much stuff. Maybe you've got too much going on, too many activities, too many extracurriculars, too many classes, too many extra lessons. Can you cut out the excess activities and stop the crazy rush? Because this is possibly why you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed and then getting angry. You may just be tired from being too busy and not having time to catch up on yourself. So slow it down, simplify your life, slow it down. And you may feel like that may cause anxiety for you because you, you're comparing yourself to other families and I'm supposed to be doing this with my children because that family is doing it and I better do this because they are doing it. No, you go to God and find out from him what does he want for you? What does he want for your family? And you do that, simplify, simplify, simplify. Number six, learn emotional regulation. Learn to recognize the beginning of anger and frustration and take yourself to one side and get calm so you can relate to your kids without anger. And take yourself to your room if necessary. I did this a lot when I was beginning to learn about managing myself and managing my emotions. I would take myself off to my room and I would go and pray and I would say, Lord, I just give you my heart, I give you my feelings, I give you this frustration, just take it from me. And I would stay there until I calmed down. And yes, it feels like, okay, so what are the kids doing in the meantime? Well, we they survived, they survived. and. It was so important for me to just get myself under control so that I wouldn't yell and shout and be angry and be that angry mom. Praying, surrendering yourself to God allows God to come in and calm you and calm your soul. But I want to say this as well, that prayer does not take the place of duty. In other words, you can pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, and pray but if you are not doing the work of disciplining your children properly, training them, simplifying your life and all the other tips that I'm giving you here, then it's going to be much harder to manage those emotions. And you can pray as much as you like and you will still struggle because you're not doing the practical things as well. All right, remember that if you feel like you need help managing your anger and you need to get a grip on this, feel free to make an appointment with me and let's see how we can help you with that. The link is in the, in the description box below. Number seven, start a routine. Create a skeleton schedule with your absolute basics in it. Only your basics, what I call the anchors, the things that have to be done. Those are thing, the things that are written in stone. And then do this for two weeks and then you add in a few extra things. And this goes together with keeping your life simple. So keep your life simple, keep it unhurried and as free of stress as possible. And then you add things in as you go along. Don't add them in until you are crazy busy again. You want to always maintain that simplicity and that calm schedule. Number eight, catch negative thinking, harness it. The Bible tells us to bring every thought into captivity to Christ. So when you're thinking, why is this so hard? When will it end? Why can't my kids just X, Y, Z? Those are all thoughts that lead to negative feelings. And remember, your feelings are impacted by your thoughts. So if you change your thoughts, you will change your feelings. And if you don't change your negative feelings, they're going to build and they will come out in anger. So harness those thoughts and choose to think positive things. This is not so bad. I can do this. I can be tough and brave and strong. And I'm, I'm going to get control of this. God is going to help me. He's promised. He has promises for me. Harness that negative thinking and, and switch it around, flip the script and start telling yourself positive things. It will make a huge difference to how you manage your, your emotions. One thing that I tell myself often is, you know what, this is not the end of the world. You can be cheerful, just be cheerful. Smile, sing a happy song, focus on positivity, makes a massive difference. Number nine, take alone time. 
take alone time. Why? Because it's helping you to be a better mom. And you might think, ah, there's no time for me to take alone time. I'm just busy, busy, busy all day long. Then something is wrong. If you cannot take a few minutes, 15 minutes in a 24 hour period to just be by yourself, to think, to pray, to be, to deep breathe if you need to, then something's wrong. It's important. I made this rule in my home where we had a resting time every single day. Once the kids outgrew nap times, I still had that resting time because I needed it. I needed the alone time to regroup, to catch up on myself, to pray, to calm my emotions, to say, okay, so this has not been a good day so far. How do I fix this? How can I change this? How can I improve what I've, what I've been doing today? It's important to take that alone time. Take that time also to analyze, okay, so why am I irritated and grumpy today? Maybe it's because I'm tired and I didn't get enough sleep last night. Maybe I'm anxious about something that's in the back of my mind and I haven't brought it to the forefront and dealt with it. Maybe PMS is catching you unawares. Very real thing for me. Very real thing for me. So ask yourself, what am I really feeling when you're feeling that anger? What are you feeling before you're angry? Because anger is a secondary emotion. So you're always feeling something before you feel angry. What is that thing that you're feeling? And then deal with that thing. Perhaps you're feeling powerless, overwhelmed, unappreciated. Deal with those deeper feelings, those, those primary emotions. Number 10, find a support system. Find a group of moms that will pray with you, for you, that will encourage you, that will support you, that you, that can help you stay focused when days get hard, that can help you realize that you're not alone in your struggles, that you are not the only one that's struggling with the same things. And this is one of the reasons why I created the Growing Moms membership was because I wanted to bring moms together to have that support in a, in a group setting where we can share our struggles, ask for prayer, where we once a month get together and have a chat about all things momming, whatever it is that's on your heart. We decide the topic every month. And if you, if, if you would like to join that, you know, want to know more about joining that membership, the link will be in the description box below. But it'll be a safe place. All my groups, all my groups are a safe place for us to be ourselves and to be real and to share our struggles. And yes, I give you, I offer you compassion, I offer you support, I offer you help, but I'm also going to encourage you to get tough, girl, and be strong and brave and, and do the work and embrace the work that God has given you to do as a mom. All right, last point, number 11, and this is kind of a bonus point. It is apologize when you do get angry. Children are very forgiving and they will usually respond very well to a sincere apology. So. Own your feelings. Don't blame your anger on them and say, you made me angry. No, nobody makes you angry. You choose to be angry. Circumstances are real, yes, but, that, but you are in control of you. And you cannot say to your children, you are making me angry because you are, you are the one that's choosing to be angry. So you, you want to apologize to your children. Now, an example of a bad apology is like this you made me angry or you make me angry when you don't listen to me if you would just do what i ask then i wouldn't get angry and yell at you that's a bad apology <laughs> a good apology would sound like this i'm sorry for getting angry with you i'm frustrated with you because you aren't doing what i asked but i had no right to yell at you like that i'm sorry that's a genuine apology okay so there are lots of reasons for being an angry mom most of them are resolved fairly easily and with a little bit of planning and self-management so here's to being an unangry mom let me know in the comments which one of these points was the one most helpful for you and what are you going to do about being an angry mom remember if you feel like you need help managing your anger set up a call with me let's chat let's let's see how we can help you with that so that you can Get off this hamster wheel, this cycle of being angry, feeling guilty, apologizing and repeat, rinsing and repeating. I want to help you gain a handle, get a handle on your emotions so that you can have a happy, calm, peaceful home, a place where God's presence can dwell. Until next time, keep growing.